Hello and welcome to our special feature on inspiring new and young African birders. My name is Andrew de Bloch and I'm the AV Tourism Project Manager at BirdLife South Africa. Africa is the youngest continent in the world. Over 60% of Africans are under the age of 25. It is crucial then that conservation engages with the younger demographic. If we don't convince young Africans to care about nature and the environment, then our plans are doomed to fail. Birding has a rather unfair reputation of being the pursuit of older and, let's face it, white people. This is also made more problematic by the fact that traveling to watch birds is seen as a very European or American hobby. However, in Africa, birds have been important to Africans and African culture before Europe and the Americas were even settled. And we have a deep, deep connection to birds as messengers, totems, symbols, and integral keys to the health of our land. In Africa, there is a strong movement for young people to get involved in birding. This has involved bird clubs at schools, education programs, the establishment of Facebook groups such as Youth Africa Birding, and all sorts of other ideas. Two of the leaders of this movement are Washington Wachira in Kenya and John Kinghorn in South Africa. We will hear from both of these inspiring under 30s in this session. Washington has shared his 2017 TED talk with us on the wonder of birds and why everyone should care about them. And John has, on behalf of the African Bird Club, contributed a talk describing the rising up of the next generation of young African birders. Please enjoy these two inspiring presentations. With me here today, I brought something beautiful. This is a feather from one of the most beautiful birds we have in Kenya, the crested guinea fowl. But this feather is more than just that. If you've taken time when you're outdoors to look at the feathers around you, you'll have noticed that there's this huge variety of different sizes, shapes, and even colors. The feather is one of the most astonishing pieces of technology invented by the natural world. And for centuries, this feather has helped birds to keep dry, to keep warm, and even power flight. Only one section of the tree of life can actually make a feather. Among all the world's animals, birds are the only ones who can make something like what I'm holding today. I personally have given them a nickname, and I like to call them the feather makers. It is the major difference between birds and any other animals we have on Earth. And if you can't make a feather, you cannot call yourself a bird. <laughs> For us humans who are Earth-bound, birds represent freedom. This feather has enabled birds to conquer gravity and take to the air in an extraordinary way. Don't you sometimes wish you could fly like a bird? Birds are my passion, and I want to change the way each one of you thinks about them. The easiest reason I love them so much is because they are beautiful. There are 10,000 species in the world, and each one of them is uniquely beautiful. Birds are amazing, and this talk is dedicated to all the birds of the world. <laughs> Indeed, these birds have been part of our lives and cultures all over the world for centuries. And every society has a story about birds. You'll probably have heard childhood stories of different birds and how they relate with man. I personally recently learned that our human ancestors would follow flocks of vultures, and then they would help them to identify where carcasses have been dropped by large carnivores. And these humans will scavenge and eat part of that meat. Birds have been used as brands and labels all over the world. You know the bald eagle? It was chosen as the national emblem for the U.S. because of its majestic strength, beautiful looks, and even a long lifespan. And just like us humans who've managed to live in virtually all habitats of this earth, birds have also conquered the world. From birds 
such as these beautiful penguins that live in the cold ice caps, to even others like the larks who live in the hottest deserts you can imagine. Indeed, these species have conquered this world. Birds also build houses like us. The real pros in house building are a group of birds we call the weaver birds, and this name they were given because of the way in which they weave their nests. An interesting one. Birds also love and dance, just like us humans. In fact, you'll be surprised to know that males dress to impress the women, and I'll show you how. So here we have a long-tailed widow bird, and this is how he will normally look. But when it comes to the breeding season, everything changes, and this is how he looks. Yeah. <laughs> Birds also, multiple species of them, do love to touch and cuddle, just like humans. And I know you're wondering about this one. Yes, they kiss too, sometimes very deeply. <laughs> Some have even learned to cheat on their spouses. <laughs> For example, the African jacana. The females will mate with multiple males, and then she takes off to find other males to mate with, and she leaves the male behind to take care of the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> and birds help us so much, and they play very crucial roles in our ecosystems each day. Vultures clean up our environments by literally digesting disease-causing pathogens, and they finish carcasses that will otherwise cost us lots of money to clear from the environment. A sizable flock of vultures is capable of bringing down a carcass the size of a zebra straight to the bone within just about 30 minutes. Owls help to rid our environments of rodents, and this helps us a lot because it saves us money. We don't lose our crops. And secondly, we don't have to buy harmful chemicals to handle these rodents. The beautiful sunbirds we see in our environments are part of nature's pollination crew, and they help our plants to form fruits. Together with other pollinators like insects, they have actually helped us to get most of the food crops that we depend on for many years. Unfortunately, the story of birds is by far not perfect. They are faced by numerous challenges every day, wherever they live. Top on the threats facing birds is habitat loss and reduced food availability. Birds are also hunted, especially migratory species and ducks that congregate in water bodies. Poisoning is happening to flocks that like to stick together, especially in places like rice fields. Moreover, power lines are electrocuting birds. And wind farms are slicing birds when they fly through the blades. Recently, we've had the talk of climate change making a lot of headlines, and it's also affecting birds, because birds are being forced to migrate to better breeding and feeding grounds, because unfortunately, where they used to live is no longer habitable. My own perspective towards birds was changed when I was a small boy in high school. And there was this boy who struck, injuring the wing and the leg of a bird we call the auger buzzard. I was standing there, just a mere 14-year-old, and I imagined of a human being in a similar situation, because this bird could not help itself. So even if I was hardly any biologist by then, I gathered with three of my friends, and we decided to house the bird until it had regained strength, and then let it free. Interestingly, it accepted to feed on beef from our school kitchen, and we hunted termites around the compound for its dinner every day. After a few days, it had regained strength, and we released it. We were so happy to see it flap its wings and fly off gracefully. And that experience changed the way we looked at birds. We went on to actually make a magazine, and we called it the Hawk Magazine. And this was in honor of this bird that we had. Helped within our own high school. Those experiences in high school made me the conservationist I am today. And a passion for birds should especially matter for Africa and all Africans, because among all other continents, Africa hosts some of the most amazing bird species you can find anywhere in the world. Imagine having a name like Shubil. That's the name of that bird. And There are countries like DR Congo, Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya, 
who are leading the continent in highest numbers of diversity when it comes to the species. These birds continue to provide the continent with very crucial ecosystem services that Africa needs. Moreover, there is huge potential for Africa to lead the world in avian tourism. The economy will definitely benefit. Imagine how many communities will benefit from groups of tourists visiting their villages just to see the endemic birds that can only be found in those villages. How can we help birds together? There is now a chance for all of you to turn your passion for birds into contributing to their continued survival. And you can do that by becoming a citizen scientist. Citizen science is a growing trend around the world. And we are having scenarios where people are sharing information with the rest of the community about traffic updates, security alerts, and so on. That is exactly what we realized as bird watchers. And we thought, because birds are found everywhere, if we got all of you and everyone else in Africa to tell us the birds they find where they live, where they school, or even where they work, then we can be able to come up with a map of every single species. And from there, scientists will be able to actually prioritize conservation efforts to those habitats that matter the most. Take, for example, these two projects, the African Raptor Data Bank, which is mapping all birds of prey in the continent of Africa, and the Kenya Bird Map, which is mapping about 1,100 species that occur in my country, Kenya. These two projects now have online databases that are allowing people to submit data, and this is converted into very interactive websites that the public can consume and make decisions from. But when we started, there was a big challenge. We received many complaints from bird watchers, and they would say, I'm in a village and I cannot access a computer. How do I tell you what birds live in my home, or where I school, or where I work? So we were forced to renovate our strategy and come up with a sustainable solution. It was easy. We immediately realized that mobile phones were becoming increasingly common in Africa, and most of the regions could get access to one. So, we came up with mobile phone applications that you can use on your iPhone and on your Android phone, and we made them freely available for every bird watcher, enthusiastic person out there. So we came up with Bird Laser, which is used by the Kenya Bird Map, and also we have the African Raptor Observations, which is now used by the African Raptor Data Bank. This was a huge breakthrough in our work and it made us get enormous amounts of data from every birder out there in the regions. With this, we realized that citizen science is indeed very powerful. The reason being, citizen science is adaptive. And we were able to actually convert many bird watchers to start sharing now information with us. When we were starting, we didn't know that birds could be a huge gateway to approaching conservation of other forms of animals. Interestingly, now at the Virtual Museum for Africa, we have maps for dragonflies and damselflies, butterflies and moths, reptiles, frogs, orchids, spiders, scorpions, and yes, we're even mapping mushrooms. Who would have imagined mapping mushrooms? So this showed us that indeed we've created a community of people who care about nature in Africa. I hereby call upon all of you to join me in promoting the value of birds within your communities. Please, just tell your friends about birds, for we are always inclined to love and care for that which we know. Please spend a few minutes in your free time, when you are at work, at school, or maybe at home, to at least look around you and see which beautiful birds are there. Come join us in citizen science and tell us the birds you're finding in the places where you visit. Even simpler, you could buy your child or your sibling a pair of binoculars or a bird book and let them just appreciate how beautiful these birds are. Because maybe one day they will want to care for that one which they know and love. The children indeed are our future. Let us please teach them to love our feather makers. Because the love of birds can be a huge gateway to appreciating all forms of nature. Thank you very much.
Hi there, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 Virtual African Bird Fair. My name is John Kinghorn, and today I'm really excited to be talking to you about a topic I feel extremely passionate about. As you can see, I'm going to be talking about a new generation of African birders. And it's crazy just, you know, doing this presentation, how far technology has come, how it has given us opportunities to be able to chat to one another and still interact with one another, no matter where we are in the world. I mean, today I'm coming, um, coming at you from Pretoria in South Africa. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, it's, it's just mind blowing. In the past, we would never have thought this to be a possibility, but now it is. And I'm going to be chatting a little bit about how technology has become such an integral part in influencing young birders the world over, but especially in Africa. So uh, very, very exciting stuff, a new generation of African birders. So in terms of birding, birding has always been really, when it comes to the youngsters, um, been seen as an old man's club. You know, really, especially in South Africa, not just birding, but wildlife viewing in general um, has sort of taken the stigma of when people think about it, they think of these khaki clad elderly folk sitting on their porches, um, looking at birds coming down to the bird feeders. Whereas in essence, that's the furthest thing from what it actually has become. Society today does not always allow for youth to express their passion for wildlife as freely as they should. I put this point down because I feel this is particularly pertinent to school environments, uh, which can be some of the harshest environments for youngsters who may have an interest in something which doesn't form part of your typical interests of what youngsters should be um, looking into um, at a specific age. Um, you know, for example, yeah, in South Africa, one of the things were um, when I was still in school, you know, you're interested in wildlife and birding and stuff like that. And it is very, it's not typical of, of the usual interest in rugby, interest in academics, um, you know, whatever the case might be, interest in going out and having a party and stuff like that. Um, you know, interested rather than spending your time going out bird watching and, and enjoying the outdoors. And that was sort of, because it was a foreign concept, it wasn't really accepted. So unfortunately, society today, yeah, although it's changing, there is still the stigma attached to birding and, and wildlife and having an interest in that. Many youth are not exposed to nature, wildlife or birding during their early or formative stages. I think that this is one of the most crucial things to do is to, when somebody is young, introduce them to nature. Not anything specific. I'm not expecting you or saying that you should take a field guide and throw it into your two-year-old's hand and start going through stuff <laughs> before you can barely utter or she can utter their first few words. But uh, definitely expose them to the outdoors. Take them out with you. Show them nature. Let them touch, feel, use their senses and uh, start getting in from an early formative stages that imprinted respect and love for nature and the wildlife. I promise you that is probably one of the most crucial things in terms of developing or helping somebody grow um, and whilst growing, uh, developing a better understanding and appreciation for nature and wildlife. Unfortunately, many youth are still bullied in school for their love for wildlife and nature and particularly in birds and birding. And that reflects back to my second point. It's something which isn't part of the norm. Uh, and as a result, it is sort of frowned upon in some in some circumstances. Um, I think that is changing. I think it's also a maturity thing as well. So I think the younger people are, you know, they don't necessarily, you know, they, are, they don't have the maturity levels to understand and process stuff when somebody is doing something different. But as they get older, things start to change. And I've personally noticed that <clears throat> in the transitions between school and university um, or varsity here in South Africa as well, where people um, in going into a university scene post school have been able to pursue their passion and their hobby without having snide remarks passed every now and then, um, which has negatively infected the, affected them pursuing their passion. Unfortunately, what this does is it creates this vicious circle results in a loss of interest in the topic, especially in youngsters. You know, youngsters who may have been extremely eager in nature and wildlife go to school and two, three, four years into school, all of a sudden, you know, what their interest is viewed as something which isn't part of the norm, like I said, and they start, they realize that, and they then start to want to naturally fit into what is the norm. 
um, and they then start losing that interest in nature and wildlife. So it's important that people start influencing at a young age, like I said in the points above, but also continue to feed that fire and appreciation for nature and the environment. Because ultimately this will uh, result in the loss of future conservation. So we're not just talking loss of birders here, uh, which in turn results in the eventual disillusion of the hobby we love most if we want to look at it in a drastic light. Um, so yeah, it's important, it's important that you fuel youngsters and that youngsters have that interest. Youngsters need to have their interest constantly grasped. And if you don't, if you can't do that, then that interest will end up um, dissipating. So birding as a hobby and why it's so appealing to youngsters, well, obviously it's growing, uh, one of the fastest growing hobbies in the world. Uh, it's, it really, really is growing at an exponential rate. Technology is, like I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, is aiding our efforts to get birding more accessible to younger age groups and people who are in areas previously which wouldn't have been um, wouldn't have had access technology to technology. It's assisting us in that regard. And it's fantastic. You can go to some of the remotest places in the world nowadays and somebody will still have a cell phone or some form of technology. And that's just the area we find ourselves in nowadays. And technology is playing a major, major role in helping us bring birding to youngsters. Youngsters obviously are majorly uh, technologically driven. And um, as a result, we are continuously looking for information at our fingertips and birding we can get a, an array of birding information at our fingertips um, because of technology so that's assisting majorly field guides and reference books reference books are easily attainable electronically nowadays as well whether it's ebook pdf or an app a lot of people will sooner than buy a nice thick um, field guide to take to a new destination they'll sooner buy an app and they will keep an app on their phone and there you have it you've got something at your fingertips and ready to use um, without having to sift through books, so to say. And that's very appealing to younger birders. Birding is a great platform to socialize. It, it really is, it's fantastic. We get to socialize with like-minded people, interact with people who share a similar hobby or passion as us. And it also creates a deeper appreciation for the natural environment. So when you get into birding, you're learning about all different aspects of nature and wildlife and biodiversity. And that is so important because young birders are not only young birders, they're essentially young naturalists because inevitably there will be something besides birding which will be grabbing their attention. And uh, as a result, they take an interest in that and therefore they develop into young naturalists. And it's those young naturalists which are going to help um, conservation going forward. And of course, birding gives us a major sense of adventure. There's nothing more exciting than heading out on a birding trip and, um, you know, going and exploring and uh, having that, creating that crucial sense of adventure. So what about the youth? Excite me. Um, young birders, what, what excites me the most? You know, these are, I've, I've, I had to try limit it to four characteristics, but really it's, it's tough because, you know, young birders are fantastic. You know, if you speak to any person or any person in sort of the elder age spectrum, who's gone birding with youngsters before, um, they'll testify to the fact, that, you know, these four characteristics I put down here couldn't be more true. And that uh, birding with them is absolutely just, it's, it's a different experience. Um, young birders are passionate, they're driven, energetic and enthusiastic. Um, they will explore, they will not stop until they've found what they've wanted to find. They will go off the beaten track. They will spend countless of hours. They'll drive overnight to go and find a rare bird that's turned up. They will um, yeah, create weird and wonderful lists, come up with you know, very interesting ideas on how to still um, embrace this hobby and lifestyle that we call birding. And it's just it's a, such a fantastic experience getting a youthful perspective, an energetic, enthusiastic, passionate, driven individual who is able to help us reignite and help people who've been in the birding scene a lot longer than they have reignited their passion for birding. And that's what a lot of youngsters do nowadays. And of course, these youngsters are not only birders, they're avid conservationists as well. And that's what I said, birders become naturalists, naturalists become conservationists. Even if they leave out the naturalist step, they are still becoming conservationists in their own right and individual rights. And we're seeing that all over the African continent at the moment, all over the world for that matter. And here's just two examples um, of two local South African birders, Joshua Zweski 
and Andrew de Block, Josh getting awarded an Owl Award from BirdLife South Africa for his um, fantastic conservation work. And uh, Andrew de Block, young birder who ended up pursuing a uh, career in ornithology with BirdLife South Africa. So these, it's fantastic seeing how these birders are not only pursuing jobs in terms of, um, in terms of another aspect of life, but where they're taking their hobby, they're taking this passion of theirs and they're turning it into a profession whether it's conservation related or whether it's avitourism related. So it's, it's truly fantastic seeing this. And of course, again, a nice picture reiterating the fact that um, it's, it's definitely a social platform. Obviously this picture was taken pre COVID. <laughs> now I suspect a picture of this, <clears throat> of this nature would be taken a lot differently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a fantastic social platform for youngsters. And that is definitely one of the most appealing things um, that make yeah, for, for birding in favor of, uh, in favor of birding for youngsters. I'm just going to show you guys a quick video here uh, sent to us by our Kenyan country representative uh, for the African Bird Club. Uh, oh, sorry, our Nigerian country represented from the African Bird Club, chatting about youngsters, how they're getting into birding, and the African Bird Club app as well. Enjoy. Bird watching in Nigeria has had a very interesting development. From the establishment of the AP Leventis Ornithological Research Institute in 2001, young Nigerians have been trained professionally in ornithology and conservation biology. In 2015, we started the Nigeria Bird Atlas project. Through this project, members of the public have been connecting with the environment through bird watching, and this has contributed to the increase in the bird watching community in Nigeria. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Paul. And Dangerous Wisdom. Joe, it's Moho. Akle Yaizi Kuyegbami. I'm John Nebechuku. I coordinate the Ocean Bird and Nature Club. I'm a member of Ibadan Bird Club. It's a bird club. Thank you, bird club. Bird club. Zara Bird Club. Mumbi Nature Club. The Project Bird Club. The Gibrahim Bird Club. The Tusei Bird Club. Abiyakuta Bird Club. Rock City Bird Club. The Rivers Club. One challenge has been the required tools and resources to enjoy the bird watching experience. But with the introduction of the ABC app, we have now had a solution to the problem of the field guides. The ABC app is one of the best things that has happened to the bird watching community in Nigeria. One thing I love most about the ABC app is that it's free, it's user friendly, and also we use real pictures, real bird sounds that can help you actually in the field. I like the ABC app because it makes bedding easier for bedders in that the inclusion of pictures and calls and the ranges of this bed makes it easier for bedders to go into the app and check information when they have challenges identifying a bird in the field. It's easy to use and it's, it provides very clear information so like Wikipedia and birds in an app. It enhances your experience at bird watching. It gives you good dimensional view of the birds. The ability to calculate the status range. The app gives you the options to play the different bird sounds and calls. It is user friendly. My phone is always with me and my app is always up and running. It's easy to use and the availability of calls. It has helped me in identification and cause of birth. It has made bird watching fun and easy. It helps me in bird identification or sound detection of birds. And it can even tell you the sites and the locations. I've been able to identify birds, no more birds, just with my phone. It's reliable, accessible, and it saves one the energy from carrying the heavy feed guides. And yes, I find the African Bird Club app very useful. It is the compendium of all the bird field guides that I've been using on field. With just a click, you can identify and listen to calls of birds. With the introduction of the ABC app, we also find that more young people are getting engaged with bird watching because young people are very familiar with this mobile phone application and putting all of this information in a mobile phone app has made it really handy and attractive to many young people. So most of our bird clubs now have more young people who are joining and participating and engaging through bird watching with the environment. Thanks everybody. So as you can see, a fantastic 
video there um, detailing how the ABC app is being used across or in Nigeria in this specific example. But uh, yeah, the app is free. You can download it on the Google Play Store, on the Apple Store. And basically, it is a guide at your fingertips on Africa's bird species. And the whole aim is for environmental awareness and the appreciation of nature. And as you can see, it's positively, positively affecting birders across the continent um, and also youngsters, getting youngsters involved. Why? Because it is a resource at their fingertip. Um, so it is a fantastic, fantastic opportunity. Thank you for all the funders, sponsors, uh, assisting in getting that app up and running. And uh, obviously all the ABC members enjoy, uh, involved in uh, putting this app together. It's a fantastic resource and it's definitely assisting in taking birding in Africa um, to different heights and helping not only develop birders, but also new conservationists. All right, thank you everybody. That is my time. I can talk to you for longer, but unfortunately I can't. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel, uh, feel free to contact us uh, on our websites or on our Facebook pages as well, and Twitter as well, the African Bird Club. We'll happily ask, answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. All the best. Keep safe. Thank you to Washington and John for your two fantastic presentations. It is so good to see young birders driving change in the birding community. I have no doubt that this youth movement will pay significant conservation dividends for our beloved birds going forward. Coming up on this feed at 12 is our discussion about birding optics with Devon Swanepoel of SAIS. If you want to understand binoculars better and work out how to decide on your next pair, then this one is for you. Currently ongoing at the main feeder is the Fitzpatrick Institute's ornithology presentation. And at feeder two, we are currently recapping BirdLife South Africa's conservation work. Also remember to take some time to check out our many exhibitors and to bid on our silent auction items.